Okay, hello everyone. And uh, this little lecture is about the psychological contract. I hope that you will watch it uh, before uh, we do week one's uh, work and discussion boards. Uh, to, this is really meant to orient you towards that whole discussion. And so first off, what is a psychological contract? A psychological contract is a shared set of expectations uh, between people in an organization. And uh, the psychological contract comes from work-related uh, situations where we're talking about the set of shared expectations between a worker and an employee. But we can also talk about this in terms of the shared expectations of professors and students. Uh, it's just very interesting uh, the effects uh, you know of uh, you know having a good psychological contract both in the classroom and in the workplace. Uh, Groupon, you may have heard of Groupon. Uh, they uh, you know strongly believe in going through the psychological contracting process, and they uh, take a, a couple of days to go through the process with new hires. Uh, and that's the extent that they think this is important. Uh, and what I'm going to be talking about is the pinch model by Sherwood and Glidewell and Shearer. Uh, and uh, the pinch model describes how the psychological con uh, contract should be created, uh, what happens when the contract is violated, and how to recover from that violation. And you can uh, easily uh, describe the pinch model uh, by looking at this flow chart. And this describes how, oop, I want to get a pen, uh, how uh, a typical or how the psychological contract is formed and how it evolves. And so when you begin a new job or when you begin a new class, uh, there's a period and my the color of my pen is white which is not really helping anybody here at all there we go uh, there is a period of sharing information and negotiation and so what that means is uh, the employer tells the employee what they expect of them the employee tells the employer uh, what they are able to do and then there's some type of negotiation uh, and then uh, once the employee begins in the job, there's a period of role clarity and commitment. That is, uh, the employer is uh, you know, uh, you know, clear in what their role is as the employer. The employee is clear in terms of what their role is. And we see a strong sense of commitment of the employee to the employer. And that creates a sense of stability. And then what happens is you run into a pinch point or a change point. And this is when something happens which invalidates uh, the roles and the commitment that have already been established. And I'll get to an example in a little bit. And so what this pinch causes is a disruption of shared expectations. Uh, it leads to uh, uncertainty and ambiguity. Uh, that is, we don't really know what's going on. Uh, we feel that things are left uh, undecided. Uh, uh, and if this continues, uh, there can be some resentment and anxiety on everyone's part, the employer and the employees. And as this grows, we come to a crunch point, or I like to call it a, cho a choice point. Uh, the crunch point is where the the disruption of the shared expectations, you know, continue to grow and continue to grow to a point where uh, the employee cannot deal with them any longer, and the employee could then just quit, saying that this is not the job I decided to, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, work at. Uh, the employee can decide just to go back to the way things were and just accept the fact that what they thought was going on uh, you know, has been invalidated and so now that's the new normal. We use that term a whole lot. Or 
you can renegotiate the psychological contract under duress. And then once that's done, uh, then you can uh, move on uh, to the whole process all over again and start the process over again. Now, let's talk about an example. And let's pen. Is this? No, it's not fixing it. There we go. Yep. Okay, let's talk about a, an example from class. So, uh, when you start a new class, uh, what happens? Well, the first day of class, you show up and the professor gives you the syllabus, and the professor will maybe lecture for like, what, 20 minutes about what they expect of you, and then you get to go home early, which is really nice. So the sharing of information is only one way in this example. It's from the professor to the students. Uh, the professor is not learning anything about the students. The professor is not learning anything about the students' expectations or what the limitations of the student. And there's certainly no negotiation. That is, there's no talk about, well, am I able to do this? Uh, or am I uh, unable to do this? And that leads to a great deal of role clarity in that as a student you know exactly what you're supposed to do uh, and possibly some commitment. And that leads to stability uh, until there's some type of change in the system. And one example of that could be the first exam. Uh, as I always like to say at York, uh, students love you and love the class until the first exam uh, or until they get the grades back from the first exam. And that could be a pinch point, that is a change point where the expectations that the students had, that is of their role, uh, now have been invalidated. They assume that their role and what they would be doing would be much less demanding than the grade on their exam shows. And so this is what a change point is, or a pinch point. It's where that uh, expect set of expectations, uh, those roles, uh, have uh, you know, been invalidated. And so we have the shared disruption, uh, of the ex disruption of shared experiences, or expectations, excuse me. The professor is surprised the students are upset the students are upset because uh, the grade was much lower than they would expect uh, and that leads to uh, uncertainty among the professor and the students. Uh, the students talk among themselves and they get anxious and the second exam comes and the grade is still the same and that leads to a crunch point, a choice point. The student has to decide. Uh, they may just quit they may drop the class or they may just not show up and both are uh, ways of self-terminating. Uh, or the students can just say, well, this is the way it is and what can I do about it? I'm just a student and so you accept the new way but you return to uh, the original role with less commitment because you feel betrayed by the professor. Or Another way that you can go about this is you can go to the department chair or you could go to the uh, dean or the provost or students have uh, very creatively gone to the EEOC officer uh, you know, or uh, the president and they're hoping that the uh, administrator will put pressure on the faculty member and depending upon the rank of the faculty member that might be the case and so now the faculty member has to negotiate under force or under duress or not being happy about doing it with the students again and this leads to a new process of sharing information and negotiating which leads to a new set of roles and a new understanding of what's going on. Uh, this well, it even looks like it in my diagram. This is pretty, a pretty messy uh, example. And now let's, why am I not getting that anymore? There, let me see if that helps.
there we go oh it's moved so let's clear that up that's pretty messy uh, what could we do to do this in a better way uh, and so one better way is to get my pen working no it's still not working there we go and so what we do is we start uh, with true sharing of information and negotiation that is instead of Uh, information going one way we have information going both ways uh, the professor communicates what their original expectations are the students tell the professor what their uh, you know own abilities and expectations are of the professor and of themselves uh, and then there's a period of negotiation that is the professor has told the students what he or she thinks they should do and now the students may see that as beyond their capabilities or not optimal for their own learning and so a negotiation process occurs where they try to negotiate what the roles and what the norms are going to be in the class and so after a period of actual given forth negotiation back and forth negotiation uh, you get to a state of role clarity and much stronger that's kinda like an up arrow much stronger commitment. One of the benefits of the psychological contract is that it leads to stronger commitment among the uh, you know, employer and the employees or the professor and the students. This leads to stability. And then if a pinch point comes, what would happen is you would have uh, in the job or in the classroom a plan on how to renegotiate the contract if there's a pinch point and so what happens is you have a pinch point and we have planned renegotiation of the contract and so that sets off the alarm that we need to renegotiate and then we stop and we go back and we rene renegotiate what happened and indeed this is much simpler and it prevents the mess of the rest of this cycle here uh, and it prevents the bad feelings engendered uh, by, uh, to everyone uh, from the rest of the cycle. So that's the pinch model. Uh, so how do we avoid the crunch points? How do we avoid uh, you know getting into the really bad part of the end of the uh, you know flowchart? Well, first off, you need to carefully and explicitly negotiate the expectations. You have to share what your expectations are. You have to listen to what the expectations are. And then you have to negotiate them and come to an agreement, a formal agreement, agreement about what the class or what the job will look like. And then you need to formally, and again, all this is formal, you need to formally plan for pinch points. Uh, it's impossible to negotiate a psychological contract which is perfect. So you should assume that a pinch point is going to come. And so what you need to do then is you need to have a system uh, that's formal and in place that will allow you to trigger an event where you can go back and renegotiate the contract. And uh, while I say this, uh, students generally don't really see the idea of it being formal. As long as it's informal, and students generally want to have an informal mechanism for doing this, what happens is, uh, because of the informality, uh, people feel uncomfortable triggering it. And so you have to have a formal process where there's an anonymous suggestion box or there's an anonymous uh, you know, uh, discussion board where people can go and say, I feel that this is a uh, you know, pinch point. Can we talk about this? And then the next time we have class, we talk about it. So uh, that's what we mean by planning for a pinch point. We have to have a formal process of being able to go and, uh, you know, uh, going back and renegotiating the contract. So uh, we're going to negotiate a psychological contract for our class. Uh, my expectations are in the syllabus. So read the syllabus to understand my expectations but I need to learn your expectations. Uh, then we need to discuss all the above 
and then we need to negotiate what the potential crunches are. And then finally, we need to plan for future crunches or future pinches. Uh, we have to have a mechanism in place to formally allow people to trigger a rediscussion and renegotiation of the class norms. So what we'll be doing this week online in discussion boards is I'm going to have a discussion board just for students uh, to discuss the questions for me. Uh, since this can kind of get messy and drift uh, since we're doing it online asynchronously, I'm going to ask students to only have six questions for me uh, about expectations or about you know what the class is going to be like. Uh, so uh, what I'd like you to do is as uh, students discuss what six questions you feel are the most important that you should ask. Uh, then in one, another forum students are going to ask me the questions. I'll answer them in the forum. And then also I'll ask students questions in another forum and I'd like everyone to respond to my questions. I want to learn about your expectations. And then we have a final forum where we negotiate the expectations. Uh, and students will be able to talk about the things that they feel uncomfortable about and we can uh, you know, negotiate or hopefully negotiate a, a solution to these conflicts. And then we need to have a formal procedure for uh, discussing uh, pinches. And so we have one, two, three, four uh, forums that we'll be working on this week uh, to go through remotely uh, the uh, psychological contracting process. Uh, some common questions uh, for the instructor from students. Uh, questions I get, you know, about the syllabus, objectives, uh, theories of learning, evaluation, uh, what the instructor's role is, uh, and my background or anything, and also things in the syllabus that you don't understand that you need to have clarified, or things that you're worried about. So these are some of the common questions that students ask. And so the outcome of all this is I hope we have an agreement on changes to the syllabus. Uh, I hope we have an agreement on informal norms for the class. And I hope we have a plan for monitoring for future uh, crunch points. Uh, and again, finally, why is this important? Uh, this is important for many reasons. Uh, one reason I'm doing this uh, this semester in this class, which is the first time I've done it in this class, uh, is COVID. Uh, we're doing this remotely. Uh, there's a pandemic going on. We're all under stress. And uh, psychologically, giving people more control over the environment allows them to cope with stress in a much better way. And so I'm doing that this semester because we all need something to help us cope with stress better. Uh, but in general, you would do this, uh, you know, when somebody is entering an organization, ugh, entering an organization, because when people enter an organization, they have to make two decisions. The first decision is to join the organization. And if it's a job, the, that decision is to actually, you know, you know, accept the job and to work at that uh, organization. For a class, that means to sign up for a class. Uh, you know, but that doesn't really... Oh, I'm going to cough. I have a cough button, so I turned off the mic. But I did cough. Uh, so, uh, you know, for students, that means that you take the... You, uh, you sign up for the class, you come to first class, but then you stop working. Uh, the decision to join doesn't mean that you're going to participate. You have a second decision you need to make, which is whether or not you're going to participate and, ga and engage. And so a student who makes the decision to uh, participate and engage, they will continue to come to class. They will do active work in like a group assignment. Uh, and doing a psychological contract creates that psychological bond which encourages this active participation. So in general, this would be a good idea to use in classes or 
in employment situations if you want to create students or workers uh, who are more actively interested in participating and engaging with the organization, be a class or a workplace. Okay, so, uh, oh, and I already said that, so I think that's it. So I'll see you online on the discussion board uh, over the week uh, to uh, actually do the contract. Bye-bye.